has this ever happened to you? Cars that appear out of nowhere? Strange photographs from the future. Something has to be done. And a fictional character from one of your favorite movies sending you on the adventure of a lifetime. You can't make this stuff up. Or maybe you can because television. Hello? Anybody home? Just go with it. Doc Brown enlisted me, a guy who finds things for a living, to do just that. Team up with screen legend Christopher Lloyd and track down the disappearing DeLorean time machine from this picture. Apparently, the future depends on us delivering this exact car to Michael J. Fox, where it's destined to greatly benefit his foundation for Parkinson's research. I'd do anything for Michael. Back to the Future co-creator Bob Gale informed us that there wasn't just one original car from the movie. There were seven. Seven cars. One by one, we tracked down six of them, only to find out, for one reason or another, none of them were the car from this picture. Where's the rest of it? Father and son super collectors Bill and Patrick Shea told us the final car, known by Back to the Future aficionados as the Oxnard car, because it was used for the scenes filmed in Oxnard, California, had at one point been housed at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. But the one that's there now, well, that car is a fake. Thanks to the carefully kept records at DeLorean headquarters in Houston, uh, yes, there still is a DeLorean headquarters. I mean, this is crazy. We were able to find the VIN number of the mysterious seventh car and trace its journey through the years. And guess where it ended up? Transfer order from Universal Promotions back to Orlando. So it's there. Chris, we're going to Florida. Yeah, all those old people. I'm Josh Gates, and this is Expedition Back to the Future. Okay. Ah. Time machine number seven, the Oxnard car. This is our last hope. You think they have a man's room here? I think that's pretty likely, yeah. Well, at least that's some good news. Universal Studios Florida opened 30 years ago, the same year Back to the Future 3 hit theaters. Like the movies, the park was an instant success. And today, more than 10 million people visit each year. It's a movie fan's paradise. But as you can imagine, we don't have time for sightseeing. So if you look to your right, you'll see the original Delorean time machine from the hit 1985 Universal Motion Picture, Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, this is Christopher Lloyd. Hey. OK. How do you know it's the real car? It says it right here. Oh, it also says it on that helpful placard right there. OK, well, uh, Brad, so this should be what's known as the Oxnard car. And it's the time machine from Back to the Future Part 3. We've heard it's a replica, but we have documentation that shows that it's the real deal. <sighs> OK, I just got moved from churros, so I don't. Maybe we should hop out and take a look at it? Yeah, maybe you should hop out and take a look at it. It says it's the one from the movie. Yeah, it's definitely old, but I don't know, man. What don't you know? I didn't the Shays tell us that the that there should be a weird Mr. Fusion on it? That, that, that looks regular to me. I know, but they said that it was replaced. At some point when it was on display, they replaced the real Mr. Fusion with a very skinny, tall, stovepipe Mr. Fusion. So the car that's there now doesn't have that. That's a fake car. The Oxnard car had some long, skinny thing on it? A stovepipe. Right. Yeah. The VIN number is the only way to know for sure. Where's the VIN on these things? Okay, open the door. It's, it's all the side. Huh? It doesn't match. This isn't the car. You sure? The VIN doesn't match. Brad, this isn't the car from the movie. Hey, I am holding in my hands a shipping order from DeLorean headquarters in Houston. It says the original car was shipped here to Universal Orlando, and this isn't it. Whoa. 
right? No, I just realized I never showed Gretchen how to make the churro better. Bradley, is there anyone in the park that knows the whereabouts of this vehicle? Maybe Phil? Who's Phil? He's like the boss of everything. Bring us to <laughs> Phil! All right, here we are. Phil's place. Okay. So, in there? Yeah, Phil's in there. And then what, left, right, down the hall? Yeah. Stupid thing. Come on, we'll find this guy. You Phil? Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, I'm Josh, this is uh, Chris. We're uh, on a bit of a mission, sorry to burst in. We came here looking for the original screen-used DeLorean from the Back to the Future films that you supposedly have. Uh, we have the original VIN number and shipping order. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but that car that you have on display out there, that's not real. I know, it's a replica. A replica? I mean, we have been, we've been from LA to Massachusetts, to Houston, now to Orlando, trying to find this thing. It's unbelievable. You guys want to see the real one? Yes. Yeah. Sorry about the waste basket. Oh, that's okay. We got plenty. Here we go. Okay, Follow come me. On. Come on. So we had this one on display for a while, but uh, you know the weather was beating the crap out of it, and people were starting to pick at it like a carcass. It was, it was a mess. So we moved it off the floor and stashed it back here. It's just been taking up space. In fact, about to move it out next week. So your timing's pretty good. Okay. Guys, open up. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here it is. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yes. It's dirty, it's dusty, but look at it. Look at the Mr. Fusion. I think that's the Oxnard car. Looks like it to me. Okay, check the VIN. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. This is your adventure. I'm just along for the ride. I'm too nervous. You do it. Oh, you do it. 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 Okay, I'll do it. You gotta be kidding me. What? It's a match! Yeah! This is it! Yes! yes! <laughs> this yes! is the car! Oh, man! Okay. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially found the seventh car, the Oxnard car. I remember seeing this up on the silver screen in part three. And now, it's here! I mean, I am standing right in front of it. And the VIN verifies its authenticity. Sure, at this point, I've now seen every screen-used DeLorean that still exists, but there is something special about this one. Maybe it's the jet lag, or maybe it's the fact that this particular car has eluded so many for so long. Now, all we have to do is rely on the kindness of a perfect stranger. Okay. Hey. Okay. Uh, Phil, look, um, I'm sure you recognize Chris. Uh, we are desperate to find one of the screen-used cars from Back to the Future, and it's sitting back here, it's gathering dust. Is there any way you would consider letting us take it off your hands? This is for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And this car is gonna raise, what well, we, we think it's gonna raise, a, a lot of money for a really good cause. Yeah. Well, like I said, it was, we're gonna move it out next week, and to be honest, it's become Bit of an albatross back here, and you guys need it so badly, I'd have to make a few phone calls, but uh, it should be all right. Yes? Yes. Did we just do it? Give me the newspaper. Oh, everything should be bad to know. What is it? The car. It's gone. Phil, 
when you said you're moving it out next week, moving it where? Children's Hospital. We're going to put on display in the lobby, give the kids something cool to see. We're taking it. Chris, don't you see? We can't, we can't take this car away from a bunch of sick kids. This is ridiculous. Wait, maybe... When are you moving it? Maybe, maybe there's still time. Well, uh, we were looking at the middle of the week, but there's... Chris, what are you doing? What? Uh, we've come too far to give up now! Guys, guys, that's... that's... that's an old car. Chris, hi. Uh, we can't do this. Josh, get in! This is the seventh car. It's gotta be the right one. No, but, but you saw the paper. Something's wrong. We've been all over the country and found all seven time machines. And none of them is the right one. What do we have to do? Build it ourselves? What did you just say? I said, what are we gonna do? Build it ourselves? Chris, that's it. We have to build it ourselves. I know it all along. So I believe I have a lot of the same staples that any red-blooded time traveler would have. But amongst my prized possessions is this piece of the A DeLorean certified by the restoration team. For my ultimate prize possession is a piece of the B DeLorean, which was used in all three movies that they destroyed on the train tracks at the end of part three. So I went to the filming location, scoured it, and found this piece of the tail light. See you in the future. Talk about a turn of events. We've now found all seven of the DeLorean time machines from the Back to the Future trilogy, and none of them was the time machine from this photo. Oh, crap. Which is why it continued to disappear. Until Chris said, What do we have to do? Build it ourselves? Bingo. What's that supposed to mean? What it means is we have only one option left. We have to build one from scratch. And since the last time I built a time machine was exactly never, I tracked down someone who might be able to help. So Chris and I are right back where we started, Southern California. It also happens to be home to the world's foremost DeLorean time machine builder. What's this guy's name again? His name's Danny Botkin. They say he's Danny the best. Botkin. Hope he's got a men's room in there. Yeah, let's hope. Back in the early 80s, Danny Botkin was just a kid who happened to spot a DeLorean while car shopping with his dad. And it was love at first sight. But despite his begging, his father decided to get a Bronco. But Danny's dream never died. And in 2000, he finally bought the space-age-looking DeLorean. He spent four years restoring it and converting it into a time machine. During this time, he worked as a DeLorean mechanic, learning the ins and outs of every inch of the car. He received so much great feedback on his time machine from fans and gearheads that he decided to segue his passion for the movie car into his career. And now, he builds DeLorean time machines for a living. Superfans say he is the best of the best, and though it usually takes him about six months to complete a build, we just don't have the luxury of time. How we doing? Good, are you Danny? Yes, I am. Hey, I'm Josh, how hey, are Josh. you? Good, how are you doing? I'm great, and this is Christopher oh, Lloyd. I know Christopher hey, Lloyd, how are you doing? You are the DeLorean guy. Yes, I am. All hey, right. Are you in the movies too? Uh, cable. Oh. So you build time machines? Yes, I do. I see time machine restoration team on the shirt. So how does one become a, uh, a time machine builder? You build one for yourself, and then after that, everybody wants you to build one for them. So, so, so were you a, a car guy or a Back to the Future guy first? I'm both. I love movies. I love cars. What better right. car to have? Oh. Somebody dropped something. Well, I it's fine. So look, yeah. you are just the guy that we need to talk to. Okay. We need a time machine. Well, I can do that for you. But not just any time machine. Okay. We need this time machine. OK. What do you think? Well, there's quite a few parts on here that look like I built. But there's other parts on here, too, that looks original, like from the original car. What do you mean? 
Well, usually a lot of guys use a lot of prefab parts, but this looks like a lot of original parts and, and some of the parts that I made. Well, we want original parts. Right. This gotta be authentic. On the other hand, there's, there's quite a few things on here that I'm not familiar with. Well, it's like a DeLorean to me. What's different about it? Well, one of the things is what he's holding. Michael, a remote control. Yeah, I've never done a remote control DeLorean. Well, you're about to. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Can you? Yeah. You can build this. I can build it. Okay. When? How soon do you need it? Uh, yesterday. Okay. Well, we need a DeLorean. A ton of them in Houston. We could ship one? Not with your time frame. Locally. Are there any around here that you know about? Hector. Yes, sir. Where was that barn find we were talking about? The DeLorean? Yeah. It's in Sun Valley. You guys up for a trip to Sun Valley? Whoa, we can't stop now. So I'm back on the road with my new pal. And honestly, things have been moving so quickly on this crazy adventure that sometimes I forget I'm actually hanging out with Christopher Lloyd. Film, TV, theater, this guy has done it all. And by the way, did I mention he's won three Emmys? Lucky for me, this extra long car ride gives me the opportunity to finally ask him a question that's been burning in my melon for the last 30 years. I mean, the thing that doesn't really make sense yeah. is he goes back in time, but wouldn't he cease to exist like the moment that his parents didn't meet? Wouldn't that just be it right there? Uh, yeah, but he hadn't existed yet. He can't cease to exist when he hasn't existed yet. But he did exist, and then when he went back, he messed it up. So why is he fading away? Why doesn't he just cease to exist? Because he go back into that time reality from the present reality. So he's, he assumes who he was at the time you go back. Have you interacted with anybody else today besides me? Yeah, well, I might have sort of bumped into my parents. Great Scott! How does Biff end up working for George McFly? That seems like a stretch, doesn't it? That he's waxing his car at the end? Biff out there waxing it right now. You don't get out much, do you? Not really. Did you have a girlfriend growing up? Oh, no. Well, what did you do with yourself? I watched Back to the Future. I can't believe you're still wearing that shirt. Well, I can say the same about you. Oh, no, I got like 50 of these. Yeah, well, I have my sweat plans removed in 87. A few other things. What? What? Nothing. Barn finds are the lost ark of the car world. Stories abound about haggard collectors stumbling across some priceless Duesenberg buried under a mountain of filth in an old chicken coop. But our mission comes with a little more gravity. Hello? You wanna go that way? Yeah. Hello? This is my life. I've been around the globe countless times and I'm always looking for something. The lost tomb of Attila the Hun, the treasure of Jesse James, Amelia Earhart's lost plane, and my kid's socks. And now I'm in a junkyard in Southern California. I definitely need to have a chat with my agent. Chris! What? Look. Oh, yeah. This is it. This could be the deal. Okay, you grab that, I'll get this. Oh. Uh. Whoa, this is a mess. Oh, man. I hope our time machine guy knows what he's doing. Can I help you boys with something? My name is Adam Riches, and I'm a Back to the Future super fan. For about the last 20 years, I've been collecting props, and merchandise, and traveling the country to meet the cast and crew. Uh, my fandom has also carried over into my professional life, where I followed in the footsteps of my biggest inspiration, the artist behind the movie poster, Strew Struzan. I've illustrated comic book covers for IDW Publishing, as well as helped out on some designs and consultation for NECA's Back to the Future action figures and collectibles, which if you told my younger self I'd be doing in the future, I think you were crazy. I know what this looks like, a couple of people snooping around on someone's property, but this is where our time machine expert Danny told us we could find a DeLorean to use. 
Luckily, I search for things for a living, so nothing surprises me. Well, almost nothing. Oh, man. Hope our time machine guy knows what he's doing. Can I help you boys with something? Uh, we're friends of Danny, the builder. He should have told you we were coming. Danny Bodkin? Never heard of him. Oh, we're here from the DeLorean. We're supposed to pick it up or the whole space-time continuum will be in jeopardy. Wait a minute. Aren't you that guy from the TV? Oh, why, yes. No, not you. Okay. You. Yes. Yes, I am. If I'd known I was going to be talking to a TV star, I would have plucked my chin. Oh, <laughs> you don't want to mess with perfection. Uh, this, this car is of the utmost importance, and it could affect generations to come, and you could be a part of that. Ah. Uh -huh. What's your name? Mabel. Mabel. Yes. Mabel. Mabel, can I have a word with you in private? I'd like that. I named my pet rat Doc. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know, do I? You most certainly do not. Okay. The Back to the Future fan base is one of a kind. This trilogy has enthusiasts of all ages from every country on Earth. And the time-traveling storyline is complex, creating its own subculture of theories and speculations. So, to set the record straight, let's turn some of these theories into facts. Did you know this fact to the future? Though it's well known that actor Eric Stoltz was cast as the original Marty McFly, the studio eventually let him go, as his acting style was too dark and brooding for the central comedic role. The production spent six weeks shooting and spent nearly $4 million before Michael J. Fox became available. But Michael J. Fox might not have been available at all, if not for one lucky coincidence. Initially, Michael couldn't participate in the film because of conflicts with his sitcom Family Ties. But as fate would have it, the show had to change its schedule when Michael's TV mom, Meredith Baxter Burney, gave birth to twins in real life. This freed Michael up enough to be able to take over the coveted role of Marty McFly. How dare you? Another bit of alternate casting happened early on, not with an actor, but with an object. In an early draft of the script, the time machine was written to be a refrigerator that was literally going to be gathering atomic energy from a nuclear blast near a remote military testing site. Robert Zemeckis eventually changed the time machine to a DeLorean before production began, setting off a craze for the extinct sports car. But the idea of a nuked refrigerator turned up again years later in another equally famous movie franchise, when George Lucas and Steven Spielberg finally used the idea in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull in a notorious scene that had fans questioning the filmmaker's sanity. Okay, well, that was exciting. Oh, did I say exciting? I meant disturbing and terrifying. So we're dropping off our barn find DeLorean at Danny's so he can assess the condition. To the untrained eye, like mine, it looks pretty rough. But, I mean, it also looks like a DeLorean, and it runs, so that's good. I just hope Danny comes back with some good news. I am not sure I can take any more disappointment. Well, I mean, it's a little rough, but it's got good bones. It's a, it's a good candidate. I'm just, I'm just kind of surprised you guys got it so quickly. Well, Chris really took one for the team. He Well, that be the last time we speak of it. Anyway, we got the car. Okay. Now what happens? Well, now that I've torn it down, I kind of checked the bones of it, made sure there's no critters or anything like that in it. I think the next thing to do is just start building it back up. Okay, so I know this is your bread and butter, this is what you do, but we obviously need a level of detail here uh -huh. that is 
off the charts, right? right. That hasn't been done before. Right. You saw the picture. Yes. Can you do that in the short time we have? Me, myself? No. But that's why I call Kevin. Kevin Pike. Does this guy know something about building time machines? Ah, he should. He built the original. Hi, my name is Benjamin Carroll, and I love Back to the Future. It has truly changed my life ever since I watched it on my old VCR. Hopefully one day, I could possibly get a DeLorean of my own. These movies have changed my life. I love them. Happy 35th anniversary, Back to the Future. Kevin Pike. Does this guy know something about building time machines? Ah, he should. He built the original. I am running out of places to pinch myself because I am now sitting at a table with movie royalty. Out of my top favorite films of all time, this guy to my left was a big part of most of them. Kevin Pike, special effects supervisor extraordinaire. The very first movie he worked on, a little thing called Jaws, changed Hollywood forever by becoming the first bona fide blockbuster. His follow-ups include Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and of course, Back to the Future. And he's sitting right here. Why? Because he built the original time machine. And now he's helping Chris and me build ours. So, Kevin, you are the authority. How does one turn a DeLorean into the perfect time machine? What, one of the things that you want to come together about is what kind of car are you going to build? Because there was several versions for different story points in Back to the Future. Right. If you remember, on the back of the car, right here, Chris, was where the plutonium chamber was. Right. Where you took the yellow <laughs> lid off and put in the red plutonium wow. that you got from the Libyans. Later, you come back from the future, and now you have the Mr. Fusion, which is a Krupp's coffee grinder. <laughs> so, based on the photo, we want the Mr. Fusion model, Correct. the one from the end of the first film. That's what's in the photo. Yep, that's great. Now that we're clear on exactly which version of the time machine we're building, let's get down to the design. We've all decided to break it down into two parts, starting with the exterior. So let's talk Time Machine 101. What are the things that every DeLorean time machine needs to have? What are the basics? It definitely had to have the bands, the lip bands. Now, when we made it, we actually used phosphorus gas tubing and got transformers and lit it up. Right, right. That's how that. we made that shape happen, because all of this was before what the kids put on with these blue candy LEDs now. Uh -huh. So if you're going to do it, at least do white, White. Yeah, we could do a white rope LED. Okay, so we have to have this banding. What else? Um, you're definitely going to have to need the iconic pieces that you always see on the outside, like what we call these these days are hockey pucks. They, they look like little Pac-Man, right. and they've gotten all these joke names. And the other ones that you see would be the strut tubes on the other side that were actually turnbuckles for helicopter blades. Huh. And we took three of them out of a recycle bin of an air parts junkyard, and we put them on there, and they became extremely iconic. The other big thing on the outside of the car that you can't miss are these, the big fins, these afterburner things. These are the greatest. This really gave the car propulsion in its imagery, just by its on there. Wow, that has something that has to come out of there. So somewhere in there, it has to have something big that does that. Right. And if you remember, we made that exhaust with CO2 to give yeah, it that cold yeah. look when it came in and stopped. Those have to be there. But that was all custom. That's not off the shelf, these things. From scratch. Wow. It normally takes Danny months to build a time machine, and that's without having to find parts identical to what was used in the original. It's a near impossible ask, but near impossible still means possible. 
Gentlemen, I just want to be clear. We're giving this car to Michael's foundation. I want it to be spectacular. No cutting corners. It has to be immaculate. Got it? Got it. Hey, Vicky here. I am a teacher in elementary school and I use Back to the Future as part of my curriculum. I do a read aloud and um, I show props, replica props, uh, to my students. And check this out. Even uh, the entire cast had signed the jacket. But what do I do when we need part two? Snap! We make our own book. And I created my own Back to the Future Part 2 book, including all the props. Thank you. Well, this is it. We have come a very long way. And it's led us here to this table strewn with blueprints and schematics with the world's foremost time machine builder, Danny Botkin, and the man instrumental in building the original, Kevin Pike. I am having the time of my life talking through the history of how the time machine came to be. But now we have to figure out what it's going to take to make our time machine beyond special with what little time we have left. Am I saying time a lot? I feel like I'm saying time a lot. Sorry, we don't have time for this. The team and I have already spent hours going over the details of the exterior. Now we move on to the interior. And on the inside, what's, what's a must have? Uh, a lot of buttons, a lot of switches, <laughs> a lot of lights. He could touch the buttons and the lights would light up and he could put any date he wanted and he could go anywhere he wanted. So it worked. You could you could play with that panel oh, and it would... Oh, man. It was like... A, it was very real. <laughs> Damn. Gotta fix that thing. All right, time circuit's on. One part that you have to have is in the interior and no matter what mode you use, and in all the shows, <laughs> you have this, and this is the flux capacitor. Yeah. For many Back to the Future nerds, myself included, the flux capacitor is the heart and soul of the machine. It's the component around which everything else is built. That's what made time travel possible. Right, exactly. So we have to have one of those for sure, no matter right. what look we make. So to learn what went into creating it is like unlocking the secret to my youth. Any fan of the movie would be losing their mind right now. And let me tell you, I may look calm, but I am doing everything I can to not pee my pants. That was a pretty simple design that turned out to be this major component. And it was just three little slivers of plexiglass and these glass tubes that are circuit connectors and they have spark plug wires on them. It was completely fabricated fantasy. And then we went out and we got a silly strobe light from Radio Shack to punch up the power when it went 88 miles an hour. Wow. And then Bob wanted some action behind Michael, so we have to have that Christmas tree behind his head that accelerates every time he goes faster. The interior has a lot of functionality, as you know. Uh -huh. One of the iconic pieces is that lever that he hits that turns the car on and off. We found that at an auto parts store that happens to be a battery cleaner. Everything had a reason. And just before we shot, Steven Spielberg called us up, said, bring the car. And we went over every story point that had to do with that car. He wanted to make sure that we had it in there before he greenlit us to go. Did it always look like it looks in the film? Did you go through different iterations of it? Um, we did as we were building it because we were thinking about what we could do and what we couldn't do. Uh, Bob Gale, Bob Z came by all the time, checked to see how it was going. Bob Gale was very, very good about reminding us this was homemade by Doc Brown and to make sure we showed the welds and we showed the screw tips and we showed the raw wire and everything that you can kind of see. He put it on there for its go power and it wasn't really the aesthetic beauty of the classic car per se. Right, it needs to look high tech but homemade. Because he homemade it. Yeah, sure. yeah. I love it. all this fancy stuff, right? And we come up with a little little alarm clock. Yes, the I alarm clock. That you can pick up at your local whatever, you know? That's a, the holy grail of pieces because it's so prominent on the dash. So that's a must have. Yeah. And it's those are even, hard to it's find. It's not even got its place. It's sort of just sort of balanced there. Here we go. Here we go. This time, come on. Ah! 
<sighs> I know that some diehard fans try to do this. They make these cars. Do they often get it exactly right? Um, not exactly. Always gets a little change as time goes on. It's like the old telephone gag where right. somebody says, no, you can make it blue, that's good, and then it gets a dark blue, and then it's like green, and it keeps changing. So I, I kind of feel that the best thing that we can do is make it 100% accurate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big time. So how do we step our game up here and do something that is truly off the charts, one of a kind? Well, I think one of the things that we saw in the picture, we're going to make it remote control, and that'll set it apart. Yeah, you heard that right. Our time machine is going to be remote controlled. It sounds crazy. And in fact, it was something they couldn't pull off in the original film. But dare I say, they solved that shortcoming with a creative solution. Got that? <laughs> Good, okay. No, they didn't train a dog to drive. The dog drives pretty well, but he doesn't make turns very well. So they, we have a human, which is me. And since we're not planning to also donate a stunt driver in a dog suit to Michael's foundation, ours is somehow going to have to do it for real. And with that and sourcing out all the original parts, that's going to make it special. <laughs> None of that prefabricated stuff. No. no. Right. And how hard is it to find original parts for this? It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be quite a hunt. Um, some of them are out of service, and uh, others are going to have to find hooker by crook or maybe from some of the fans. We'll find them. How do you all feel? We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of hunting to do. Oh, well, now let's get to it. Let's make a time machine. That'll be let's fine. Do let's do it. Come on. Let's go. This mission continues to amaze me, and that's really saying something because I go all over the world to find things for a living. But building something, well, that's brand new territory. Hey, Kevin, did the DeLorean have a flamethrower? And while that's exciting, it's also problematic. We are go for launch, people. Because our deadline is set in stone. Hope none of this is hooked up to anything. And if I miss that date, well, actually, I'm not quite sure what happens. A black hole opens, Biff buys another casino. I don't know. And I don't want to find out because the space-time continuum is serious business. Help! What I do know is I am not going to let down my new friend Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox. No pressure, right? I need you to make yourself available the day after tomorrow. Is that Michael J. Fox? I have a mission, and my mission is clear, and I will not fail. The future depends on it. All right, Chris, check the newspaper. It's a bust. We're done. Ah! Warning. Uh-oh. At least I hope not.